A healthier, happier life begins here. Welcome to Mercy Moments, a podcast by Mercy Health in association with True Chat. Coffee is actually the second most highly sought after commodity on earth. In the US alone, it is a $225 billion industry and adds almost a half a trillion dollars to the worldwide economy. Ironically, its biggest growers are in impoverished regions. In fact, they are from countries in Africa, South America, or Southeast Asia. That's why getting fair prices for their products is so important. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm your host for Mercy Moments, T. Allen Sealer, coming to you from Champaign County here at True Chat Studios in Urbana, Ohio. For over 25 years, he has been the director of the Rosedale Business Group. And for almost 20 years, he has been the owner and operator of Hemisphere Coffee in Mechanicsburg, Ohio. Please welcome to the program, Paul Kurtz. Paul, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. So my first question is, what exactly is the Rosedale Business Group? Well, it's actually about 25 or 30 businessmen and women who pool their resources, which is a code word for money, (laughs) and their talents, uh, actually providing coaching for national uh, business people. And this, when I say national, I mean uh, in Thailand, a local guy might have an idea for a business or in Nicaragua. So they do a lot of micro loans or SMDs, we call them uh, small to medium size Uh, startups, they'll fund, you know, a hundred chickens. So this lady can uh, start producing chickens or eggs, whatever the case might be. And uh, it's been amazing to see what giving people a hand up rather than a handout can do. So what would you say is the organization's key mission? To see people flourish, you know, and and we have uh, Rosedale Business Group is attached to Rosedale International, which is a faith base or a church organization. And uh, we see the world as God created it and God wants people to thrive and enjoy waking up in the morning. And, and poverty is really just something broke. Something's not working. And so uh, economics often is a way for people to just see God's kingdom come into a region that's broke. So what would you say are some of the organization's goals? Uh, I think it's creating jobs, alleviating poverty, uh, see people thrive, see communities thrive. As it relates to Hemisphere Coffee, how does uh, that affect how you do business? Well, I started Hemisphere Coffee Roasters as sort of a lab, as a way to kind of apply some of the things we were doing overseas. Actually, I remember a conversation I had with a group of farmers. I was not in coffee, but I just paid $15 for a pound of Costa Rican coffee at a Starbucks. And they were telling me in Costa Rica that they get 80 cents a pound. Wow. So I'm like, Okay, where's the money? That's often a, a good question. You know, find out who, who's, where's this money going? And that led me to really look at how coffee is traded and tied right into the goals of Rosedale Business Group was, and so a lot of them today provide some funding and provide capital that I buy full containers of coffee from. They get paid back and they make a return on it. So where are a lot of your growers located at? Most are in Nicaragua. And all across Indonesia, so that'd be Sulawesi, Sumatra, Bali, uh, Java, Central Java, and then Northern Thailand and Southern China, Yunnan province. How have uh, a lot of the growers benefited from from your program? Creating jobs. When a farmer, uh, you know, I had to think already, if you, if you look at your county and think of, of your county being basically a mono business, that mono, that one business is coffee and Everybody is in coffee. So if coffee prices are low, nobody's hiring. If coffee prices, they're just doing the bare minimum. We've seen when people have jobs, they can they can spend money. They It makes the whole community right. thrive. We've seen clinics, farmers that are now have some extra money. They provide a teacher to be on the school on the farm. We've seen clinics established. Uh, there's a lot of women working in coffee. There's a lot of health 
uh, issues that women have with just with maternity issues and cancers and things that I'm not sure why it's high, but it's very high in coffee producing lands. So a lot of special clinics and it's, it's not us giving a handout. It's, it's, we're buying business to business, the coffee, right. but the farmers see these needs and there's 80 women in Thailand that hand sort our coffee. Most of them were sex trafficked huh. and today have viable jobs. Their kids are running around, they're singing, they're, they're sorting coffee. They have a, they have a respectable job and they're thriving. So what are some of the challenges with working in those areas? Government corruption, uh, regulations that don't allow somebody to break away from status quo. Status quo is causing there to be a group of people that are exploited. Uh, so there's payoffs, there's corruption, there's, uh, dictators, you might say, in a lot of, a lot of these countries circumvent the globe, the equator, north and south, three, 400 miles. So you have a lot of developing countries, uh, I second see. and third world in, and, and then natural disasters. There's just one year the crop is great. The next year we had a hurricane and there was landslides and they lost everything. So is coffee an annual crop? It is. It's a, uh, they'll get 30 to 40 years off of one tree, but every year there's about a three month harvest window. Ultimately, what's the mo- been the most rewarding for you in dealing with these countries? I think seeing uh, where when I first went in, seeing the poverty and seeing the, I just want to say, you just, I just sometimes look at the dogs, you know, and as the dogs are slinking around and they're skinny, life is hard. Right, right. But then to come in and see a community thriving, see kids in school and uniforms, they're getting an education, seeing the change in the community, that's been the most rewarding. Well, that pretty much does it for the first segment. In the second segment, I'd like to talk a little more about the actual coffee making process and some of Hemisphere's great offerings. We'd like to take this time to remind our listeners that all of True Chat's podcasts help pursue a common goal. To educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations. To learn more about Mercy Moments, listen to the recap at the end of the program. And to search for previous episodes or find ways to listen, please visit us at mercymoments.org. Welcome back. So just to recap, our conversation today has been about coffee, social consciousness, and how it can have a positive impact on communities. And my guest today has been Paul Kurtz. So can you tell our listeners a little bit more about the coffee making process? Coffee shipped to us in sacks of 150 pounds. Wow. Our roasters uh, take 35 to 40 pounds. We put the green unroasted coffee in, in about 10 to 12 minutes in 500 degree temperature. We have uh, roasted coffee. Coffee can be light roasted. It can be medium. Uh, when, when coffee is light, it's very acidic or whiny, snappy. And as it gets darker, that goes away and more body, wow. more chocolatey notes can come out. So it's really an art. We, we look at the rate of rise, how in a time span the temperature rises or doesn't rise. And from year to year, different origins want to be roasted different. So we're always playing with it and testing and slurping and spitting everything your mother told you not to do. We're, we're doing all the time in coffee to make sure we're roasting it the best way that that coffee wants to be roasted. What's some of the equipment that you typically need when you roast coffee? Uh, there's two systems. One's, it's like Ford and Chevy. They get you to the same place. There's just see. two different ideas. One is a, a drum roaster. That's like a two, three hundred year of technology. Uh, when I was learning roasting, I was working with a guy and he in the morning did six batches and ruined every one of them. And I'm thinking, how in the world am I ever going to learn roasting? But the secret is the $35,000 computer that's sitting to that old technology, looking at the fan speed and the rate of rise. And so I can, I can save a recipe that I like. We also have, uh, Uh, the hot air roaster, which is like a big popcorn popper, takes 40 pounds of coffee and fluidizes it in the hot air, which is convection. 
So it's very clean. You might say industrial coffee. A lot of our restaurant accounts, we use hot air roasted. Uh, when a coffee has more interesting notes that we want to nurse out, we'll use the drum roaster. Well, didn't you say one time that that in some ways technology hasn't changed in a very long time? I, right. I thought you said that one of your pieces of equipment was was pretty old. Yeah. Well, I mean, the drum roaster is is just basically a spinning drum over a flame, and they've been doing that since hand crank days, I would think. 300 years ago. So what's the difference between making like regular coffee and decaf coffee? Well, we roast it very similar, but the decaf coffee is sent, there's six or seven large industrial plants that do the decaffeinating process. I see. And so they're put in big vats of water. Usually there's a chemical release agent that the caffeine floats to the top of the tanks. It's kind of a white powdery substance and is sold to pharmaceutical and to Red Bull and other drinks. Yeah. Uh, it acts different in your brewer. It actually it? wants to float. When you're brewing decaf, it's hard to get it strong because it floats on top of the water. And one way to get around that, if you can have the wherewithal, if you want really good decaf, tip to listener here, pour some hot water over the grounds to saturate them and then put it in and brew it like normal. So why are some decaf coffees bitter? If it's at a restaurant, it's because it, they're not using it as much and it's sitting on the burner. It, it's hard to get decaf. Most companies take their worst coffee, something that they cup and they say, this is not going to be good coffee and send it to the decaffeinator with the idea that people that drink decaf, ah, they don't care about flavor. I see. But 40% of the population in the U.S. would prefer decaf if they had the option. So Hemisphere, we, at Coffee Roasters, we take it as a viable uh, section of society and we take top grade uh, Nicaragua coffee and have it decaffeinated in Veracruz, Mexico and uh, shipped here to Mechanicsburg. So what are some of the newest trends in coffee? Like flavored coffee comes to mind. Flavored coffee. I think also the, what we call the K cups, but the single serving again, that's another number that I read recently. 40% of the people that drink coffee at home are doing it in a single cup. Coffee for, I'm going to, here's a little techie thing. Coffee for 10 days after it's roasted is releasing carbon dioxide. I see. In order to put Cough, ground coffee in a sealed container, you have to off-gas it. That's a fancy word for it has to be stale. I found a machine and a cup that has a little silicone ring that will allow the gas to escape, but not let oxygen in. I see. So I can roast and grind and pack, and the aroma from our single cups versus Dunkin' Donuts that from Walmart or something is unreal. Uh, other trends that are happening in coffee is we've done everything kind of at the roast level, at the barista level preparation. It's now the farmer's turn. There's over a hundred steps they do to make coffee something that's exciting that, you know, we drink coffee just for pleasure. It's not for health, not for nutrition. It's just for pleasure. So what do you like? Well, the farmers are playing with different processing and aerobotics and and delayed fermentation and just all kinds of things. And it's awakening a whole different flavor notes that we are loving. So what are some of Hemisphere's most popular offerings? Our Sulawesi right now, uh, which is an island of Indonesia. It's very clean, very bright, but also has some, I call almost sweet bread notes. It's... Um, that's, that's very popular. Uh, our Jamaican Me Crazy, that's a flavored coffee. That's our number one selling flavored coffee. Our Nicaragua, direct from the farm. Uh, you can go on our website, hemisphericoffeeroasters.com, and watch a documentary that tells you the story of that farmer. A lot of people want to make a connection with what they're drinking in the morning with a face, and that's one way you can do it. So where exactly are you guys located? 275 East Sandusky Street in Mechanicsburg, Ohio. I think you already mentioned your website. Uh, are there any other ways that customers can get a hold of you? From the website, there's uh, a Shopify store. They can talk to us through there as well, or they can email me at store at hemispherecoffeeroasters.com. Well, that pretty much does it for our program today. A quick reminder, 
Our goal here at Mercy Moments is to promote local resources, awareness, and involvement. Therefore, if you have any comments related to past episodes or have suggestions for future programs, please contact us at T-A-C-E-Y-L-E-R at Mercy.com. That's capital T-A-C-E-Y-L-E-R at Mercy.com. Again, I'd like to thank my guest today, Paul Kurtz, for being here. You can listen to Mercy Moments on True Chat via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or anywhere else fine podcasts are found. For Mercy Moments, Mercy Health or Being a Hospital in True Chat, I'm your host, T. Allen Sealer. And I'm Paul Kurtz. Thank you for listening today. Stay healthy, Ohio.